And uh, hello, 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 hello. Hello out there to all of you who are listening in right here and right now to everything that is going on. Uh, and if you are within the sound of my voice, my darlings, it is another glorious, glorious day here at the Donut Factory. <laughs> and I hope that you're having a good time and, and getting yourself together because, darling, it's time um, to dish tea. And you're dishing tea, darlings. Ha <laughs> ha! With Big Meats right here and right now, honey. We're going to be dishing tea and dunking a couple of crumpets, baby, for you. Now, before we get started, let me tell you right now. I'm at the Donut Factory. Y'all know this is the time where usually because we're slow or whatever, I come to you with a couple of things. I'm a little behind because we got some stuff that's going on. But I want to tell you this now because it's going to annoy the fuck up out of you like it does me. You're going to be hearing a lot of dinging and carrying on because we got we have these motion detectors here. And so they constantly go off. It's even got me when I'm moving and carrying on a certain spot. So it's going to go off. It's going to be like three or four different rings or whatever that's going to come across. And um, that's going to be distracting. So you're getting to the rhythm of it, all right, and carrying on. So be that as it may. All right, so that's to let you know all of that. Um, again... Uh, if you want to know anything about me and carry it on, honey, I encourage you to go to my website, www.dishingtea.com. That's www.dishingtea.com, where you can find out everything about what you want to know about me. Well, not everything, but <laughs> anything Dishing Tea. The radio show, my books, my uh, fragrance oils. And uh, I'm also uh, in the process of directing my first independent film. Uh, so we're getting all that together and carrying on, okay? See what I mean? All right, darling, thank you. So uh, with that being said, we got a few things that I want to talk about today um, that has me a little bit perturbed. And I'm going to preface this by saying if you are a conservative Republican... I would really like for you to weigh in on this because I want to get a good discussion going on. Not not some, no arguing and shit. I want to get a good discussion so we can hear you. I want to be able to understand what it is that you're doing and your belief systems for you, for those of you who support the current administration and for those of you who are trying to keep the current administration in. For those of you who feel as though that he's doing such a fantastic job or whatever, I would like to understand your particular uh, point of view. I've always said that to me, to hear the word conservative always brings about a time and place in history where uh, white male um, dominance and hierarchy was superior, okay? This excludes women, this excludes people of color, this excludes everything, okay? And I've always believed that anybody who say that they wanted to, uh, who believe in those values, um, of course, when it was a white male dominant hierarchy and carrying on, that also means that we were at a time where blacks did not have any rights and, and this, that, and the other. We were still, if we weren't slaves, we were second-class citizens or below. And so we were still fighting for, <laughs> well, the fight had begun for equality and carrying on. If we were freed and this, that, and the other. So every time I hear conservative values, I always think of that. And then when I hear black conservatives, to me, that's an oxymoron. OK, because because of those particular values. Now, let me preface this by saying I do get for those who feel as though they don't want government interference. I don't need the government trying to tell me what to do. I don't need the government to, uh, you know, di dictate my wages and care. No, I, I'm, a, I'm a self-made man. You know, I built my businesses. I pay my taxes. You know, I don't believe in giving out handouts just because somebody say that they are. I believe that if. People apply themselves or whatever that they can make something of themselves and they can do better than their circumstances and carry on. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I believe that most people who say that they are conservatives, that's the idea that they think that they have in their heads. However, in this country, those particular values do not resonate because 
of what conservatorship is in this country. And it always is followed by uh, uh, supremacy. And in this country, it was white supremacy. And, and y'all know, I, I've said before, I believe that, that to say supremacy is becoming a talking point now. However, um, at this particular time, hold on, y'all. Um, at this particular time, to uh, say that you are a conservative or whatever t- takes you back to a time where supremacy was the ruling factor. And white supremacy, in my definition of it, it has always meant that they, they, they're not saying that you can't have. What, they, what it is is that you just can't have like they have as much as they have. And you can't be on their level. You can have, but you just can't have what they got. Okay? You can't be an equal. Okay? And so that's what I feel, <coughs> excuse me, when I hear uh, conservatives in this country. Okay? Um, so let's go here because there's a number of things that's going on in this country and we have yet another smoke screen that's being thrown up because we're in an election season and y'all know every time we get into an election season and they're trying to slide something under the radar, what do they do? They bring up an LGBT argument. Okay. They get the evangelicals involved and carry it on. And one of the things I always say is that for us to want to believe in separation of church and state, that has no bearing here in this country. It's cute to say when you want the church to pay taxes. It's cute to say when you feel as though uh, how I how I believe, you know, for those who are not Christians and for those who are uh, you know, non-traditionalists here in this country, and you want to, you want the church, or you don't want government to tell you what faith to have, and this, that, and the other. So I believe in all of that. Okay, it's good to say, oh, we need separation of church and state. However, in this country, there is no such thing, because everything that our laws are governed by uh, are governed from a a, a Judeo Christian standpoint. Every every law that's on the books comes from or has some kind of religious base to it. Every time that we want to get something done politically, what do they do? They go round up the churches and carry it on. We as black folks, honey, in order for us, when we were fighting the civil rights and carrying on, where did we meet? We met at the church house because that's where we galvanized. I mean, hell, look at who our leaders were. You talking about um, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, who was what? A Baptist minister. You talking about, um, uh, uh, come on now, wait a minute, uh, uh, Malcolm X, who was a Muslim preacher. At one point, you see what I'm saying? So th- the fight for our equality and carrying on always was with the church. The church and carrying on has always been involved in some sort of politics. And for us to believe that church and sep- uh, that separation of church and state is supposed to stand, it's not going to because everything here has been rooted in it. Okay? It has been rooted in it. And I'm saying that to say this. I'm going I'm to make this first point that I'm going to come in and say hi to everybody. I see y'all trying to come up in here and y'all waving and stuff, but y'all know I got to get this out and then I'm going to come and say I'm going to address you individually. Um, we have the current administration is now wanting to change the, <laughs> change the Constitution so that gender can be defined. Now you want to define gender by what it is or how you were when you were biologically brought into onto the planet. When you were born and you had your Earth Day, your gender is determined by uh, uh, what you were assigned at birth, okay? The problem that I have with that is as we all age, as we all come into a consciousness of our own, oftentimes that there is not supported by uh, where we were, how we were born. And, and, and then they want to sit there and say, well, the science says this, and they want to bring the science up in here. Well, science is saying that the reason why we have different genders and carrying on is because it's chromosomes. The chromosomes don't work. It, it's an X and a Y that makes a girl, and it's two X's that makes a boy. Oh, do I got that right? Whatever. It's two X's and an X and a Y, okay? But what ends up happening... And I learned this in my psychology class. 
is that oftentimes when you see uh, people who come out and you feel as though they may have more characteristics than the other, you know, than, of their gender, birth, and assignment, it's because this. If this is an X, okay, right? What happens is maybe we, we're trying to get all of this, but maybe it was supposed to cut off and instead of it cutting off, it got a little bit past, you know, or whatever. And it started to form another X or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And that little bit that done crossed the line because it didn't stop at the Y and it kept going. It then starts to, the body starts to develop differently and it starts to take on either masculine characteristics. Now, we all know that when you are an embryo, honey, we all start off female, right? We all start off female. So for my trans um, persons, those who are transgender and those who are walking this earth and, and, and believe it is their duty in order to, to, match their, to match their mental with their physical and their emotional and uh, their spiritual health. For those who walk this world and, and uh, go about what it, what it takes to, to, to bring about that particular kind of change and those who go into transitioning. Who is it? Why is it that it is the government who needs to tell you what is defined by gender? Why is it that we have this as a referendum to where you want to have the Constitution dictate what it is? Just like they tried to do with gay marriage. You want to sit up there and say, well, marriage is defined as. Really? Okay, now let's go here. Because, see, now you want to sit down there and they want to bring the Bible up in it. What the Bible said, the Bible never said, it never said specifically that one man and one woman is what marriage is all about. Because if you pay attention, because they love quoting in the Old Testament, hell, a lot of the prominent people in the Bible, honey, was fucking everything that moved. And they had umpteen wives and carried on and this, that, and the third. And blah, blah, blah. they had midwives. They had all this other stuff. So... Where we get flawed at is that we want to sit down and make this a comfortable for our own belief system and care and all. For us to sit down here and entertain trying to define what gender is and we have no concept of what sexuality is outside of male and female, we are still on the precipice of trying to understand sexuality in its entirety. And yet we have an administration that wants to sit down and tell folks that they cannot be who they are. We have an administration who tell folks, do y'all remember just a while ago, they would they um, this whole transgender thing started because the current administration wanted to ban trans children from serving in 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 the in the armed forces, and I don't know how far that's gotten. If y'all know that information, somebody put it up in here so I can so I can um, have have the information and share the right stuff. But uh, you you do know that. Um, he wanted to make it so that trans children cannot serve in the armed forces. And how do you take someone's constitutional right to serve? You know, if, and, and, and particularly that is volunteered. If I voluntarily say I want to serve my country and go into the armed forces because you see me as transgender or I identify as transgender, you want to tell me that I cannot serve my country and that there is a violation of everything. I did not take the test. I did not sit down there. If it, Like everybody else, you have to pass the test in order to get in. Well, let me do my due diligence and then let my merit speak for itself. Don't tell me that I can't do this because you... Do. I'm sorry. Somebody tried to call me. Um, Wait a minute. Oh, damn it. Get back on me. There we go. Um, Somebody tried to call me on Facebook and, and carry it on. I will get back with him in a minute. Uh, but here we are, we're, we're in this place to where um, you you want to tell folks what they can and cannot do. And, and then in the same breath and token, you know, how he spits out so much venom and carry it on. And you want to make America great again and all this, that, and the other. And this little hoopla, you know, but yet you have Americans that you're trying to throw away. You're, and these are not talking about, we, we're not going to get in the whole thing of whether you're documented or undocumented. Because that's a whole nother issue. I'm talking about trans folks who are American citizens and you want to take away their rights to serve and you want to now um, remove their protections. 
if we sit up and talk about transgender issues, and if this goes forward to where you're trying to define what what gender identity should be, then you're going to remove a whole section of people that would not have any protections by the law, which means that a lot we have a lot of uh, transgender murders that go on yearly. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the Transgender Day of Remembrance. I think, what is that, November 20th, I believe it is? And every year... Uh, there's celebrations that go on across the country to where we name the names of trans persons who were killed uh, through violence. I always name the ones who have who also passed from uh, health illnesses and care known because they're pioneers on the fight for transgender equality, transgender health issues and care known. So I, I, I also, when I read names, I read names of those who have passed from uh, health problems as well as from violent behavior and stuff. Uh, so every year we have that, and we have a number of people who uh, are killed because society says that they can't have jobs or whatever. You know, a lot of folks disagree with transitioning, particularly male to female, because female to male, and this is debatable and argumentative and carrying on, but female to male uh, trans men, uh, oftentimes, once they start transitioning, um, they, they do have their own set of problems, but once they start to develop facial hair, once they start taking their testosterone or whatever, they may look like pretty boys or whatever, but facial hair is, is equivalent to masculinity. So they may not have the same pressures right at the front part of it that uh, a male to female trans woman may have because once you come through puberty, the male body forms based on the testosterone. So, you know, they may have broader shoulders and bigger feet, man's, you know, man-sized hands and this, that, and the other. They may not be the most feminine, okay? So, in their transition, you know, they may be what we call clocking. They may be easily clocked and this, that, and the other. But because they wish to, to see themselves and live themselves the way that they're living, and this is not, a, I want you to understand this because a lot of folks say, well, if I say today I just feel like a girl today, that's because I can go into the bathroom. See, that all that was bullshit. That was bullshit from the pit of hell that it came from. And everybody wanted to sit down there and dumb down and want to talk against something. They had no idea what this is. Okay. Uh, and it's not like this is some kind of Halloween thing because I, I was about to say it's, this is not some, oh, I, I hear today going tomorrow, but a lot of folks do it on Halloween. You know, they feel like they can get up in a dress and, 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 yeah, and you know, yeah. put on a little paint or whatever. Oh, I'm a girl today and oh, it's Halloween. Ha ha ha. But for those who are living this life, this is real. Okay, this here is a is a real struggle. So we have a lot of things that 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 are going on. Um that that it requires discussion, it requires education. And, and and the sad thing is, is that when whenever we're dealing with transgender issues, a lot of people don't want to take the time to learn about the trans community because they disagree with it. And that's fine. You can disagree with it all you want. But one of the things that when we say educate yourselves, honey, you can't you can't sit down here and fire off bullshit and then don't want to sit down there and learn what it's about. Learn what it's about and still have your feelings. If you disagree with it, okay, I, I still disagree with it, but at least learn what the hell is going on. You know what I'm saying? Hell, um, it's the same thing like you hear when you learn how to cook. You know, if you don't like spicy foods, what do you do? You don't put the spices in your food, right? Oh, I can't do spicy, honey, so I can't have that spicy. Like when you make chili. Everybody got a fantastic chili recipe, but you know some folks will have your ass burning and other folks won't. Some folks like it sweet. They put sugar in theirs or whatever. So whatever the case may be, you can sit down here and, you know, learn about something and still have a disagreement with it. You know what I'm saying? And with this particular issue, we need to make sure that we do just that. Understand what this all is, what this is all about. Before you start casting your own little shitty ass judgments and carrying on. And I say it like that because a lot of folks come with a lot of meanness and malicious, malicious rhetoric and carrying on. That means nothing. And, and because we're in this age of, of computer courage, everybody get behind this damn social media and they will spew out the most venomous shit. Okay, because don't they not they're not willing to stand up in somebody's face because they know they get their asses knocked with some of this shit that come out their mouth. Okay, disrespect my asses. That's oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got a little personal because I've I've read some heinous things and everybody always want to throw a death threat some damn way. Ridiculous. 
Go ahead. 627, Orion Control. All levels, normal activity at this time. Copy that. So, you know, we have, we. this is what we have going on. Okay, now let me pause here because I, I just got, you know, I told y'all I'm, I'm at the Donut Factory, child, so y'all gonna hear me 10 forward and, and copy that and this and that and then you hear these damn little chimes. So let me see who's all, who all that came up in here. Okay, we got Casey that came up in here and, um... Casey, Janice Smith, and hey, baby. Uh, Con hey, Miss Connie, how you doing, girl? Okay. Uh, George Walker that came up, senior, has come up in here. Okay, hey, baby, how you doing? Alan Sorensen has come up in here. Mitchell has came up in here. And Reggie, hello to you as well. Uh, David Evans is up in here. And Derek has come up in here. Hello, baby, how you doing? Jericho is here. Lupaka, Lupaka, you up in here, baby. What's going on? How are you? Tracy, I thank you for coming up in here, baby. You want to ha, Tracy, that's it, baby. Uh, Keande, okay, hey, what's going on? Joanna is up in here. Hello again, Miss Constance and Tracy. Uh, Michelle, hey, little sis, what's going on? <laughs> uh, Najee, come up in here. Uh, Ruben is up in here, and Walter is up in here. Hold on, I'm trying to wave to folks. I'm, you know, when y'all come up in here, I'm waving at y'all back. Uh, Sandra F Fever. What's going on, girl? How are you? And how have you been adjusting to uh, Aretha's passing, honey? You know, I, I wouldn't really want to know what's going on with you and, and all of that, okay? Uh, Anthony, hey, baby, how you doing? Uh, you've been in my prayers, honey. I know you're all uh, out and about and carrying on and out of the country and things, so do your, do your thing, sugar, okay? Uh, and I'm holding you up, honey. Uh, Chester, you done came up in here. <laughs> Okay, Steve Allen, you said what well, Trump is evil, period. He will do and say anything to save his ass. He has no moral core. You know what? I, I tend to agree with that. Nick Conti, Nick, you know, hey, how you doing? I've not spoken with you in, in quite some time. Um, and Tracy, you said yes, meets. Okay, well, how about that? So now, you know, we're up in here. We're dealing with this whole trans thing or whatever, and that was one of the issues that I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to get back into that as well. However, um, let me go here because I haven't chimed in on this. and There was two different incidents that that happened, and again, it's, it's, it's about these people who call their goddamn cops on folks because they feel as though they can. And I have issue with that, and I take issue with that because... What we have here in this country, we have a resurgence mm -hmm. of, of what we see, of what we know to be a lot of racial tension. You know, like I said, when I hear the word conservative, I go back to a time where this was a white male dominated uh, core. You know, b before women started marching and burning their bras and carrying on, before black folks started marching and wanted civil rights and equal rights and voting rights and carrying on. I'm talking about that particular time because it seems as though every time somebody say, well, when times were simpler and the men were men and women were women and carrying on, we always go back to that particular era because the folks who, you know, who were the powers that be, you know, that's what they wanted, okay? Um, and we have a problem. I have a problem with that. Hold on, I'm checking my monitor. Just to see who's doing what. Okay, that's somebody coming in from the parking garage. That might be my guy. Um, but nonetheless, let's go here. We're going to start with the first one. And that's little Miss Thane, honey, who called the cops. You know, first she wouldn't let the, she wouldn't let the boy come in into his own hotel. I mean, you know, his own apartment complex. She going to block the door and shit and carry it on and this, that, and the third and all that. Now, here's the thing. Now, I would say this. Because on the surface... On the surface, and for those of you who may say that she had a point, loosely she did. Very, 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 very loosely. Because, you know, oftentimes when you live in an apartment complex or whatever, you do have folks who sit out and try to wait for you to come in so that they can slide up in there because they're not residents or whatever, right? And many times there's a number of folks who may not say anything. Sometimes I don't. I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Folks will come in the building and shit and carrying on and you don't know who they are. But then if you don't know your neighbors, who are, you know, you know you can't sit down there and question because you don't know all your neighbors. So in that regard, she loosely, loosely 
had a point. But as she started questioning this man and going on, and he said, no, I live here and things, and if you want to sit up there and play Angela Lansbury and Murder, She Wrote and shit, you know, and want to sit down there and question this man, then it became offensive. Because now you're going to ask, well, what apartment do you stay in? And this and the other. Bitch, what difference does that make to you? What the, Are you the owner of the building? If I told you where I stay, what the hell made you think? And then when the dude started riding off, you know, when he started calling out names of the management company and carrying on, that still didn't satisfy her. So, see, now she started overstepping her boundaries. Now, here's the ticket. When she sat up there and blocked him from coming in, when she refused him interest in carrying on, had he knocked her on her ass... Then it would have been a whole separate issue because now you'd have had this black man hit this white woman, you know, and it would have been an issue. And it would have caused a bunch of calamity. And I'm having a problem with that, okay? Because when he sat up there and said, excuse me, please, and this, that, and other, let me get by, blah, 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 then she followed him. This bitch got on the elevator with him to go up to... His door, okay? Well, I want to see who you're visiting. Bitch, what? What? Who in the hell that made you security of the place? And where was the security? Do they have a security officer in the building? Because her job should have been to go to the security. I mean, listen, there's a strange guy up in there. I don't know if he's a resident or not. I didn't see him use his key to get in. I'm concerned. Okay, Boom. That could have stopped all that. But if you don't have no security there, bitch, who are you to sit down there and think that you damn Jamie Summers? Okay, and, and, and gonna play Miss Bionic Woman, honey, with one arm because you walking the dog with the other one. Huh? Now, like I said, had he knocked her on her ass, that would have been something, right? But here's the thing. Now, I've got to find the report because I know she called the police, but I was told that po the police had signed it with her. And I need to find out if that's true. Wait a minute. Let me get something because my throat is kind of dry. Um, but I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, so y'all tell me what's the tea on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, tell me what the tea is. Okay. Because if they sided with her, I want to know what was the charge. Okay, what, what did they side with her for to say that she was right about something? Because when he used the key to get up in the motherfucking apartment, that should have been the end of it. Okay, because she was wrong all day long. Then she wanted to say, oh, well, I just wanted to know because if you're a neighbor, then I need to get to know you, bitch, fuck you. Because at this particular point, no, you don't. You don't need to know me. See, because we're not going go to go do walk our dogs together. Nothing. You're not going to come down here and borrow a cup of sugar. You're not going to do shit, but get on my damn nerves. Okay? Because of what of, of how you do. Because all she had to say, if she was that concerned, as a question, how are you a resident here? And he said, if he had to say, yes, took it at face value and walked on. And like I said, had it been a problem, she could have called management in the morning. You know, listen, I, I, I don't know. There was a guy and he came in and I'm not, I wasn't sure or whatever, blah, 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 you know, and I'm sure they have security cameras or whatever. But here's the thing, because, see, I said on his part, he should have called the police on her. Because I'd have said, uh, okay, I'd have said, listen, you know, I'm uncomfortable in care, now I'm going to call the police on you, bitch, and call it Grace, okay? But I got to find this report to find out what, the, what happened when the police got there, because she did call the police as well. Okay, wait a minute. I got a couple of comments that came up in here. Some more folks that came in. Uh, Steve, you say what? A conservative government is an organized hypocrisy. Benjamin De, uh, Disraeli. You know what? I Hey, organized hypocrisy. I like that. Okay. Let's see. Who else? Uh, Sir Brody done came in. Hey, baby. Pamela Woodley. Twin. What's up? <laughs> That's a high school friend of mine, child. Oh, my God. Hey, girl. What you doing up this late? Okay. Or are you on the East Coast and it's early? <laughs> I mean, the West Coast. Uh, Stephen, you say, what? Well, that heifer wanted some BBC. That's it. You know what? Hey, she even got in the elevator with him, but she was afraid. And see that? Right. Okay. Right. That part. 
You claim, bitch, that you afraid, but you finna get to get on the elevator with a strange black man talking about you finna follow him upstairs. Bitch, really? So you can sit up there and scream, me too? What? No, honey. Uh-uh. I ain't buying it. I'm not buying it. I ain't buying it at all. I'm not buying it at all. Now, on the same wavelength as that, the bitch that called the police on the nine-year-old little boy. Yeah. Let's talk about her. I'm so motherfucking mad that bitch there. And the reason why I got to say it like that is because you wanted to cause trouble. Okay? You wanted to cause trouble. That boy was there with his mother. Now, if you felt violated or anything and you saw that he was a child and he was there with someone, usually, normally, and most of the time, your conversation is with another adult. It could have been two bitches sitting up there talking about their kids and she could have said, you better learn how to teach your kids manners and blah, 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 blah. And it could have been a back and forth exchange between the adults. But, bitch, you want to prove a point. See? You want to sit down there and call the police tell my son you were sexually assaulted by a nine-year-old. Scared that little boy had to death. That boy don't know what the hell is going on. And when they reviewed the tapes and things to find out that that little boy had nothing to do with you, bitch. It was his backpack. Yeah, I was too close. He come walking by his backpack set up there and grazed you. But you went on with this rant and this rage about how this little boy grabbed your ass and you were sexually violated and assaulted and you wanted the police. Really? Then, I think, I think the part that got me most infuriated, and again, I, I, I've only seen the clips on the news, I haven't seen the full interview, but it, it, but what got me was when they showed her the tape and they went to her and was like, okay, well, you were wrong because this and another. She says to the little boy, no, she said to the young man, I don't know his name. I'm sorry. And that was it. You went on ratting and raving for a half a motherfucking hour, bitch, about how the fuck you were sexually assaulted. Then got the police involved for this little bitty old baby. Ignored his mama and cared on. You ain't even tried to have to hash this out as a woman, bitch. You went to call the police and ranted and gave this little half hour soliloquy on some bullshit. And then when it came down that you was wrong, you only gave a 30-second little bitty-ass apology, bitch. Fuck you and the hell you come from. I swear to you, I cannot, I would not be able to sit right. If I were to see that woman in right here and right now, yes, it would be on and proper. I would have to end up tying her ass down and she would listen. Baby, I would sit down there and sing every stanza of Lift Every Voice and Sing, honey. All the ones that we don't know. You know, that song got four stanzas long, honey. I would sing every fucking stanza of that song. And then I would turn around and sing motherfucking Amazing Grace gospel style. I would give that bitch so much black culture, she would hate them. She would hate me for everything. And then on top of it, she'd be a whole bunch of raggedy, nasty, country bunking bitches. Who want to feel on your ass, ho? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm cussing like this because I'm mad about it. I'm, I am just irate that she sat up there and 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 what is this thing? I got into an argument. I was on someone's radio show, Brian the Hammer and then Brian Hammer Jackson. I keep saying the Hammer. It's Brian Hammer Jackson. He's a he's a uh, block talk block talk radio host like I am, and um, I I I. Listening to his show, he has a guest that calls in named Stanley. And Stanley, uh, he says he's Haitian American. He sounds like he's relatively young. And on top of that, honey, he he's a Trump supporter and he claims to be a Republican. 
And this, uh, I won't say that he's out of his mind because I, I don't want to believe that he's out of his mind. But what he stands on and what he believes in, he's a very literal person. Okay, so if you say something and try to challenge him, honey, he's one of the motherfuckers, honey. No, I didn't say that the sky was blue. I said that it was periwinkle. You know, he one of them motherfuckers. Hold on, because I'm hearing folks coming up in here. Wait a minute, let me take a pause. Hold on a second. All right, I'm back. That's my donut guy, honey. He's coming to bring the pastries for our um, coffee shop, Soho Bakery here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, uh, dig that. 18, all right. So, uh, I am... Wait, wait, damn it. This lost my train of thought. Uh, this distraction. But, um, yeah, okay, well, thank you. Yeah, he does support Trump. Yeah, yep, yeah, he's out of his mind. <laughs> Steve, you're a mess. But, yeah, he does support Trump and things. And so, he, like I said, he's very literal, okay? He's, he's a literal dude. And he always wants to sit down there and this, that, and the other. But one of the things that he refused to believe is that this resurgence of what we see to be racism and the whole idea of white supremacy being what it was back in the day. Uh, he refuses to see that. Now, he said he lives in New York, in Brooklyn. And I'm like, how in the hell you don't know this? Because this, because this incident with Miss Thing and the nine-year-old happened in Brooklyn. Okay? And and I'm I'm having a hard, hard time with anyone who wants to sit down here and say they cannot see this. I, I have a hard time with anyone who don't believe that this is what's going on in this particular culture and this climate. All right, now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and the reason why I have a hard time with it is because I really believe that people don't want to see it. They don't want to acknowledge it. They don't want to acquiesce that this is what's happening because that would mean that everybody else was right. See, for all the bullshit that's going on, everyone else was right. Now, what now? I bet you this. Here's the thing that I bet. I bet you if I were to sit up there and say, well, you know, the civil rights movement, honey, is, is making a resurgence because... You know, uh, black folks is this, 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 and this. I bet you folks will jump on the bandwagon with that. You know, oh, black, because we hear it all the time. And, you know, black folks need to get over this and we need to stop talking about reparations and learn how to do something. So anytime we start talking about that kind of stuff, we would end up getting folks who, they would agree to that. Oh, yeah, you're right, black on black crime. And they'll get on that board. But when we say that white supremacy is making a resurgence. When you think about what happened in Charlottesville and carrying on and, and Stanley wanted to argue me down with, no, that's not what, that wasn't its intention. And I said, yes, the fuck it was. I said, do you hear that chant that they gave? I said, listen to the chant itself. The chant itself was, was, was uh, insightful anyway. I said, and what made them, you want to sit there and say they got a permit. They had a permit for the daytime hours. What the hell made them come out there the night before they were supposed to start marching to do that little rally with the tiki torches and shit? I said, so don't give me that bullshit. You need to sit down and understand that. Now, you could argue it down all day, but don't sit up there and say that the premise of it is not there. Okay. Steve, you say, well, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Betty got on television and apologized. She's trying to keep her ass from being run out of Brooklyn. Perhaps. Perhaps. You know, I ain't going to put it past that. You know, because, hell, as far as I'm concerned, shit, she need, <laughs> she need to. She really need to. She need to sit up there and pack up and go someplace else. You know, if that's what she's going to stand on, because that was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Now here, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here because all of this is connecting. Okay. Did y'all hear about the whole thing with Megan? What's her name? Megan Kelly, the news anchor. Okay. And 
she got to talking about blackface and carried on and she did not believe that being in blackface was supposed to have been racist or whatever when it's Halloween. Mm. -hmm. Yeah. She said, as long as you are doing a character for Halloween, it's not racist. <laughs> Can you stand it? And she was trying to compare it to how when black folks get up in white face. Okay. Now, when we're doing characters, okay, Lana, and you're talking to an actor here, so let's, let's get into this, okay? As an actor, it is my job to make sure that the character that I portray is a real depiction. All right, good night. Or good morning, rather. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to get my my nose together. Y'all know I was a runny nose boy all of my life. Okay. So I don't want y'all to see me going through all these changes. I'm trying to be a little discreet. Okay. But this weather is changing. It's got me... A little that way. Okay, there we go. Um, where was I at? As an actor, it is my job to make sure that when I am doing a character or, or making a, a believable stint, that uh, I come on and make sure that you believe it, right? Then, they had to go through and educate this thing on what blackface was about. And things, because apparently she did not know. Because she sat there and said that when she was younger, you know, um, there, it was no problem uh, with all of that. <laughs> you know, as long as it was on Halloween. And so, Melissa Rivers, Joan Rivers' daughter, was sat there and told her, well, yeah, you can sit down there and be in costume, but nobody will sit down there and come out in a Nazi costume simply because it's Halloween without without understanding the implications behind that, okay? And then she said, well, if you, if you think it may be offensive, then you already have your answer. That means it's going to be, okay? Now, Megan was saying that the girl from Housewives of New York, you know, she got blasted because she wanted to be Diana Ross for Halloween one year. So she put on a little dark makeup or whatever, make her skin a little darker and this, that, and the other, and said the folks flipped out. Now, here's the thing with that. I don't necessarily see the Diana Ross thing as a problem because I know drag queens who cross paint or whatever. And, you know, they'll sit up there and, and, and you know, they, they just became a white version of Diana Ross. You know, they, they put on the, you know... And it wasn't blackface because see blackface. Let me let me educate y'all on blackface. Blackface was when they sat there and put all that dark charcoal on. They exaggerated the eyes to make it look all sunken and wide. They put the white paint around the lips and stuff because they were trying to emphasize that black folks got these big ass lips. They took the contour and stuff to make the nose their noses look broader. And then they went on to depict us in every negative stereotype that they thought existed for black folks because black folks couldn't get the acting jobs. And this is before we were able to get into film and television. And then when we were able to get into the, get the jobs in film and television and carrying on, then, of course, it became the maids and the butlers and things. And then they want us to sit down there and, you know, a hobbada, 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 you know, yeah, the boss, the air, no, but he do, you know, they want us to do all that. So when you have someone who cross paints, uh, for instance, there's a girl out in Vegas who does Dion Warwick. Now she done had her cheekbones lifted and carrying on. And when she puts her makeup on or whatever, she looks exactly like Dion Warwick. But, Okay, I don't see that as a problem because she's she took on an image. She's not sitting up there making a caricature of this or whatever. She wasn't depicting her in any negative stereotypes. She kept she kept Dion's legacy together. Hold on. Go ahead. Ten twenty seven. Main lobby. 
for drive normal activity at this time. Copy. So, I want you to say, shuck and jive, Tracy Wright. <laughs> Timothy, hey, baby, you know, came up in here. What's going on down there in Florida? Florida. Okay. Uh, King Slaw, you know, came up in here. Hello, how are you? Um, so, that's what, that's what that was. Okay, when we had Eddie Murphy, who sat up there and, and played the different characters, when he played the white man and things, and, you know, this, that, and the other... Um, it wasn't it wasn't to adulterate that or to bastardize that. It was him playing a character. So there was a there's a difference. So when her her argument on the Diana Ross thing, I supported that one argument because I'm I I'm, I'm I'm there. You know you can't sit down there. If if you said you were Diana Ross, it would have been different. Had she said she was Diana Ross and came out there with something as black as this on her face and the wide lips and carried on, and she sat up there, you know, uh, they used to tease Ross all the time about how big her mouth would get because of her teeth, and you know, she had them deep deep laugh lines or whatever. So every time you see her. When they did characters, they always talk about her mouth and things. Now, how she did that and had, you know, trying to make her, you know, uh, they used to call the black folks spooks back in the day because of how dark they were. So, has she done that with the with the um, the skillet black look or whatever and tell me, oh, I'm Diana Ross and, and, and did all that stupid ass shit, then it would have been offensive. But no, she came out there and from what the picture was, hell... She looked like she just put on some, some fashion fair, you know, the, the lightest, you know, she's a white girl, so you got to get the lightest of light, you know, so it didn't match, or whatever, match, and, and carried on, and went on about a business, like she had a suntan or something, so it wasn't like it was something um, ridiculous, however... You know, folks got upset, and you know, black folks, we get mad at the wrong shit at times because we don't think. All we hear a white woman to put on, you know, she in blackface. No, she not in blackface, honey. She was being down the road. That wasn't blackface or whatever. Blackface is a whole, that there has become a whole separate show. Blackface was, was a whole separate genre of shit. Okay? That's where, oh, man, man. If y'all, y'all know. Look at your cartoons from back in the day when they were doing all that shit. And getting, oh, my man, this, that, another. And they used to sit up there with the white characters and they had the Sambo look or whatever with the fat lips and all that. That there, Yeah, those car cartoons were very racist because they were sitting up there depicting black folks in that particular manner. But we sit up there shucking and jiving and be like, hey, hey, hey. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But my whole thing with Megyn Kelly is this. See, this ain't the first time that we had to deal with racial uh, instances from her because, hell, she said on the show one time before she got her own little talk show, she told the folks that Jesus was black. I mean, uh, that, was, uh, that Jesus was not black. Jesus was a white man. Right, Tracy, the minstrel shows. Exactly. Um, she said Jesus was a white man. She then stood up there and said that uh, she she was the one who protested. Y'all remember a couple years ago when they had a newscaster who was protesting or got upset because there were black Santa Clauses in the in the shopping centers. She was the one who did that, and she was upset. And she told everybody, everybody knows Santa Claus is white. Really, a fictional character, bitch. You want to definitively say that everybody knows that Santa Claus is white. And then you want to say that you're not racist or, or, or carrying on. You may not be overtly racist, okay? Or or you you, you may have or, or you may you may say that you harbor your own prejudices. However, that particular comment right there, bitch hell, that there is every underlining anything about her family, about whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's everything about that. And I have a problem with that because she came back on the air and then she made this wonderful apology. I did not hear the whole thing, but she said and this, after she had finished, the artist gave her a standing ovation and carrying on. And now she done got back in everybody's good graces. But I'm like, Miss Thing, you are a journalist. You are a professional journalist. Bitch, you own, own Fox and CNN or whatever. The MSNBCs and all that kind of shit. You up there and... That is unacceptable for somebody who, who has the ear of everybody. And you don't know how to sit down there and be responsible for the information. Okay? I'm having a problem with that. Okay? Hold on, y'all. 
I got folks that they came with T. Nicole, T.J. Nicole, rather. Hey, thanks for coming up in here. My cousin, Yamana, came up in here. Hey, cuz. What's up, baby? Okay. So now what say you? Dunk a couple of crumpets up in here, baby. I got the tea, honey. Y'all got the crumpets. Dunk a couple of crumpets up in here. Let me know what, what y'all are feeling and what you're thinking about all of this. Because I've titled this, The More Things Change, The More Things Stay the Same. You know what I'm saying? We're sitting up here. You know, we in this battle and carrying on about wanting to make sure everybody is treated like human beings, the way some human beings are supposed to be treated. At the same time, the opposition is coming from everybody who claim that that's what they stand behind. But you want to you want to stand behind it, but yet you want to put limitations on it, and that's not fair. Where do who puts limitations on what? You may not have to agree with it. And let me give you a good point because I don't want y'all to think that I'm self righteous and things. And that I just love everybody because I don't. <laughs> okay, let me be honest with that. I, and, and let me not take the whole Christian approach of, okay, we're supposed to love one another. Honey, as far as I'm concerned, I can respect one another. And if we're going to say respect is love, then yeah, we'll, we'll do it that way. And I will call that Zinnia style love as in respect for one another because you're a human being on this planet. But I may not have agape style love for everybody because most of the time, folks, I say this in my first book, Awakenings, Epiphanies Along a Spiritual Journey, that most people want to believe that they operate in agape love, that whole God is love and unconditional feel or whatever. But we don't operate there. We operate most of the time in Zinnia style love. Zinnia style love is the kind that is very conditional. Why is it conditional? Because if I don't know you, bitch, I'm not talking to you. If I don't know you, bitch, I'm not going to sit up here and give you my money. Why do you think you can walk walk away from homeless folks or whatever? Why do you think that uh, oftentimes, honey, you could sit down there, you could love somebody today but hate them tomorrow because they done bought you a car or done bought you a watch or whatever. So see, Zinnia style love is very, very, very conditional. As long as you're doing something for me, oh, I love you, but the second you fuck up, then you know it's 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 uh, it's on and pop. Oh, I got to cut down. I can't fuck with you no more. Mm -mm, no, you shady. You know, you know, cross me, and, and you know we get into that, okay? And so because of that, I said all that to say, see, I really don't like drug addicts, okay? I really don't care for drug dealers. How about that? I don't because see, my family has been hurt by it. My family has been shamed by it. My family has been the culprits of it. Okay, uh, uh, well, not the culprits, the victims of it, because hell, my house been robbed and carried on the thing for drug addicts and shit. You know, you got drug dealers sitting there trying to trying to hold you hostage on your block and tell you what you can or try to tell you what you can and cannot do. I don't care for that bullshit. Okay, I don't. I really don't. Even in my relationships, I really don't like weed smokers. Okay, I I I don't. Okay. Uh, however, I tolerate it because hell, what else am I gonna do? You know, it's it's a recreational drug and carry it on and, and this that, and that. I can't stand the tattoo children. Okay, you got all these goddamn tattoos every motherfucking way. That ain't me. Okay, I can't stand it. I really don't like looking at it. And especially on a woman. I do not like seeing a woman who is tatted down like that. Then she want to go and put this shit all in her face. That bothers the fuck out of me. And every time I see it, I think you have no job. I think you are a circus freak. I think whatever. But... I hold that all to myself because I'm still going to respect you because, hell, that's your appearance or whatever. They ain't got nothing to do with how you perform your job. How you, you know, it becomes an issue when you want to sit down there and treat me like I'm some kind of second class citizen or whatever. That's when it becomes an issue. Or are you? Because, hell, I may be on my period one day and decide that I don't feel like fucking with y'all. And I may look at you crazy or whatever. You may want to clap back. So it goes both ways. But the mutual respect is there. Okay, the mutual respect is there. Because if you ain't fucking with me, I ain't going to fuck with you kind of thing. I don't have to have a conversation with you and carry on. However, I am, I'm very inquisitive, so I try to get as much information about it so that it doesn't throw me. You know what I'm saying? I want to understand it so that I'm there. You see what I'm saying? For those who are, who, you know, have different kind of sexual proclivities and carrying on. For those of y'all who into scat and being pissed on and shit. What the fuck? I don't want to be bothered with nobody like that. For what? You stink. In my mind. However, I'm not going to sit down there and throw you under, up under the bus. 
you know, and things of that nature just because of my hangups. You see what I'm saying? I still need to respect and treat you like a human being. Okay, hell, and it only becomes a problem if a problem is made. You know what I'm saying? And that there is where we have to get to with everything. So, uh, in saying all of that, and then let me go back and say this about the weed smoking, because for those of you what well, you ain't tried to get, yes, I have. I've smoked a joint here and there. I've smoked on, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a blunt and, and things of that nature. And I really don't like it. Okay. I don't like the high that, you know, the highest that way and care. No, you're sitting up there looking all lethargic and shit. I know for me here, I'm, not, you know, and carrying on and, and, and shit. And then it crashes and then damn munchies, baby. No, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I can't do that. Mm -mm. No, no. Knock yourself out. Give me a cocktail. I could sit down there and nurse a cocktail. If you had your blunt, I got my cocktail. We could do that. Okay? We could do that. But because you do, the only time it becomes a problem is if you're in my circle and then you start to become like a crackhead with an act as if you can't function without it. And my nephew, I had taken him on, on a, um, my play nephew, taking him somewhere with me. And he had pissed me off so bad because you're a guest. And everybody wanted to go smoke. And why you the first motherfucker up the damn steps? You ain't had nothing. You ain't put five on shit. You ain't put nothing on nothing. But you was the first motherfucker to jump to them damn steps. What? Uh-uh. No. Sit your little ass down and wait till you invited. You know. And we had a little riff about that. And, and care now. We iron out the wrinkles and things. So he had to understand where I was with it. And then I under, I had to understand where he was. Because, hell, that's, that, that's, that's the culture. When somebody say, okay, let's go blaze. Hell, you get up and go. Or else you're going to get left. And I'm like, uh-uh, bitch. You here, you here representing me, ho. Uh-uh. You are a guest of a guest, bitch. You don't jump up because they say, let's go. What is this? You wait until you are invited, honey. You don't sit down. And then you ain't putting no money on the bitch. They came in with it. You ain't got yours. What? So, yeah. So, in understanding all of that, okay. And I, and I say that out loud because I don't want it to, to be misconstrued that, oh, I'm some, some hootie tootie, you know, fresh and fruity kind of bitch. And that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a free love, you know, and, and power to the people kind of children without any hangups. No, I have a few. I have more than a few, you know. Um, but nonetheless, the bottom line is we have to learn how to respect one another. And I said all that to say, uh, going back to the original point of understanding how we can learn how to turn this shit around. The more things change, the more things stay the same. We got this resurgence going on, and, and the question becomes, what are we going to do about it? Because for those of us who are old enough to remember what it was, okay, why are we accepting it to happen again? Okay, for the new babies, honey, that don't know what it was, and they got stories of it, you already knew what the stories were. Why are you not stopping this and saying, you know, we're going to do better than that? Okay, so... Let's go here. I, I, I got a couple of folks that came in. Yamar, you say what? They don't want us in the world with them. They're trying to create a society without or with slavery and black people out of power. I, you know what? Okay. See, that's what I'm saying. Reverting back to days of old. Uh, Michael, the big dog that came up in here. Hey, baby. Tracy, you say what? Different generations clash sometimes. Yeah, yeah they do. You know, we do get the clash or whatever, but when we got, when are we going to stop clashing and start clapping and start appreciating one another? See, oftentimes, see, we say this and I know when I was, when I was, we were the Generation X. So when we were Generation X and carrying on and was out there trying to make it, you know, the, the baby boomers and carrying on thought that we were crazy and this, that, and the other because we were too far out there, you know. But change comes with us. Uh, coming through and, and, and letting our voice be heard. Look at the music. This is how, how hip-hop and rap had come into the game. You know, because they had, they had to um, force their way in and, and, and say, I'm a force to be reckoned with. And now, uh, did they respect everybody? No. So some of the tactics used were fucked up. But nonetheless, we got an overall 
acceptance. You know what I'm saying? So in understanding that, that's how we have to come through with it. But now, this generation, honey, they don't want to do shit because everything now is handed to them. See, that's our fault because we gave them everything. We gave them so much to where they ain't got to fight for shit. They don't, I don't even know what the young folks fight for these days outside of trying to get on prep. You know, and, and <laughs> that's, a, I go, that's a whole nother thing. Um, because I'm still not sold on that thing yet. Everybody, they're trying to get everybody on it, but something about it just has not been 100. I'm at 98 percent with it. The other two percent is still rocking me, and I and I ain't done with it. But uh, so, you know, it, it, the 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 younger children and carrying on. We don't know what the hell their voice is, and oftentimes the mistake is that we're trying to get our voices to come out of their mouths. Well, honey, this is their experience. This is them forging their way into adulthood, honey. We've already done it. You know, so now we're trying to sustain ourselves because hell, as we get older, we see we're starting to get pushed out, you know, and we're getting pushed out by our own. How about that? It ain't the old folks pushing us out. We pushing ourselves out. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Go, oh. go, go ahead. Buffalo Bayou, all clear at this time. Copy that. Um, so that there is one of the things that we have to we have to uh, con concern ourselves with. Let me go here. I got a few folks that came up in here. Mr. Demetrius Taylor, my namesake. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for coming up in here. Steve, you laughed at me. Ha! Tracy, you say that's true. Steve, you say what? Younger folks have easier lives than previous generations. Yeah, that's true. Because Well, look who fought. See, the younger generation always get the benefits of what the work was from the older generation. See, everything now, you know, when we fought, baby, we fought. You know, we had to fight for the kids. And look at the LGBT community. Okay? Look at us. Okay, at back in the day, honey, to be a flaming queen, honey, if you was out there like that, bitch, you know you were fighting every day. Okay, the whole idea was, was the masculine children, honey, who was able to get in and fit in or whatever. They were the ones who were always on the skirts or whatever, and, they, and, and we didn't have the openly gay bars or whatever that, you know, you had to go around the corner, through the woods, back the door, hit three times the secret knot to get in because it was so that way. Now... Look at it. Hell, we got the bitches walking down the street, honey. We got men in jeans, mustache, foot, stag drag, walking in six-inch pumps and carrying purses. Okay? And that's not a bad thing. It's just that this is this is where we have evolved to to say, okay, you know, we, we've allowed that to become part of our no, normal uh, narrative now to where this is a part of who we are for those who are out there and carrying on. It's not just, you know, the stealth children getting in or whatever which ties back to the point of our trans children, how are you going to sit down there and try to define gender identity? Why is the administration wanting to do that? Because this has nothing to, this has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you, darling. This is all about me and my life. It's not, it's not, it's not being a detriment to anyone, but I will say this, and I think this is what's happening. I say, who we are? Cranley, you know, can hey, Cranley, what's going on? Hit me up in my inbox. You and I have not talked in quite a minute. I don't even know if you remember talking with me on the phone. Terry, what's going on? Thanks for coming up in here. Uh, we have allowed... Oh, damn, I just lost my train of thought because I said hello to everybody. So I, um, Shit. I hate when I do that because I was I was about to tie this point together. But um nonetheless, let me start here and, and go back to the whole trans issue. As far as folks under oh, I know where I was going. Um folks have got to understand that this has nothing to do with us as a collective. Okay. You may not understand the trans issue, but this here is an individual thing, but here's where it is, because I think the government is getting in on it because a lot of our transgender servicemen and servicemen and service women, um, now that they've done their time, whatever, hell, they got medical benefits. And so now they're, they're going to have the sexual reassignment surgeries or whatever, and the government don't want to pay for it. 
Well, you are an insurance. Okay, you are an insurance. Okay, whatever the insurance is, honey, and, and if they earned it and paid into it, there's no such thing as them not being able to be serviced. I mean, hell, ain't that what veterans are fighting for? How many of you are veterans out here listening to me and you have a problems down at the VA hospitals and carrying on? You have a hard enough time trying to get your damn services and carrying on. And so imagine that of a trans person who was like, okay, I've been up on the hormonal therapy and this, that, and the other. Now it's time to take the next step. And... Um, you know, this, that, and the other. You mind you say, well, they go overseas. Yeah, a lot of them do because, hell, they find it is cheaper to do it over there. You know, and this, that, and the third. But why should they have to go into other countries when our country here is supposed to be the Mecca? We're supposed to be the end all be all. We have the most advanced medical facilities and carrying on, but yet you want to tell folks what they can and cannot do, and yet they paid into it. I'm having a hard time with that. I have a hard time with that. Okay, so y'all talk to me, honey. Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me what to say. Am I on the right track, or am I just a bitch sitting up here with 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 an opinion, and not being sensitive to the government or to the conservative children, honey? Is that what it is? Am I not being sensitive to conservatives? Okay. And the reason why I have a problem with that because they still have not, um, um. answer the question as to what it is they're going to do about it. You know, we have, we have not really settled down to say what's right and what's wrong with the medical system. You haven't even settled on the problems that's going on with the VA hospital now. And then you want to sit down there and say, oh, well, we're going to block this particular folks from, um, from doing X, Y, and Z. Is that your, is this part of the getting the VA hospital together, getting the VA structure together? Because if that's the case, how come we still have homeless vets in Canada? There should be, I, I say this every time I talk about veterans, there is no such thing as a homeless vet. At least there shouldn't be. But why is it that a lot of our, a lot of our homeless institutions, honey, are full with veterans? Hmm? There should never, ever be a such thing as a homeless vet. Ever. Ever. You hear me? I sit up there, you hear them closing down a lot of the a lot of the military bases and carrying on. Why are you closing them down? Why don't you take these folks who have already been servicemen, honey, servicemen and women, if you don't want to pay them housing, put them back on the fucking base. You can make the base of, you know, um uh, uh, civilian territory or whatever, but hell, it's, they, they, shit, they, they are accustomed to it. That's what they know. They've been, they dedicated their lives to it, whether it was forced or not. And I say forced because we're talking about those who got drafted in, you know. So how come we can't use those those uh, barracks and carry it on and and house our 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 veterans? Okay, I have a problem with that. I have a real strong, hard problem with all of that. You know what I'm saying? So let's look at that from a standpoint, you know. But overall, we're in a we were in a strong racial climate, children. And as and as long as this man is in the office, I think what has happened is that we have allowed ourselves to be bamboozled. We have allowed ourselves to be duped into believing that. Um, it was going to get easier. I really believe that a lot of folks thought that with Obama, Obama's presidency, that racism and black folks was going to have a much easier time. And for those who believe that Obama didn't do anything for black folks, they just mad because he, they didn't get the black folk hookup. And I still say that most of the time that we did not go properly with an agenda to say, hey, this is what we need. We sit up there thinking that, okay, we got a black president. He know what to do because he black. And carrying on, not realizing that or forgetting the fact that most of the time, everything he pushed through, the stuff that he did accomplish, imagine what he could have had he not had all that opposition. Because most of that stuff they blocked. Hey now, how you doing? Most of the stuff they blocked and carrying on. So when we look at it, we're in a high, high, high uh, demand of a, of a racial climate, you know. And I've, I've said this all along when uh, the current administration became the current administration. And that is, um, this is not whether or not you're pro the current administration. 
this is anti-Obama. Everything now is about destroying everything that Obama came in and done. And um, it's just sad. Okay? It's sad. And the thing that, that makes it sad is that now it, it, you made it a race thing because nobody tried to undo what Clinton did. Nobody tried to undo what the Bushes did. Nobody tried to undo what Reagan did. You know, everybody want to undo. Uh, this administration is trying to come and undo Obama stuff. So I'm having, a, I'm, I have an issue with that. Okay, Jamar, you say, well, I see it like this. He's doing something good that looks bad. It brings a lot of exposure to everyone in the government and the truth about what we are today and most concerned about uh, what uh, we say we're at most at more concerned about what we're going to do for jobs uh, in full. What? Wait a minute. This fool who is going to help the churches are already uh, our churches already can't do it. OK, now, you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If, if you know, he has a couple of victories up under his belt, the current administration, you know, because he got he got Kavanaugh on and thing that was his appointee, you know, he, he he's being deemed, you know, we, the unemployment rate supposedly is the lowest it's ever been in the last however many years or whatever, and so he's taking credit for that. But a lot of that stuff, except Kavanaugh, he issued that. But the economy and stuff, that was that was up under it started up under Obama's administration and the direction that it was going in. But a lot of his race baiting and, and the baiting and stuff that he does to his power base, he sits down there and he triggers them into doing all this kind of shit because that's what gets it. He's he does that like he does for ratings. Okay? It's done like it's done for ratings. Like it's on television. You know, he, he says what he needs to say to get everybody hyped and carrying on. And then now this. So as I said before, the whole transgender thing is a is a political ploy to get folks all up in arms over bullshit and carrying on. So say la vie. So right now, my darlings, that's going to be it for me because, yeah, I think I just talked myself out of points. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, yeah, and that's on my phone. So um, you got to hear the Wonder Woman thing. <laughs> he inherited Obama's economy and, wait a minute, he inherited Obama's economy and good works. Of course he did. Just like Obama had inherited all that bullshit from Bush. Okay, thank you. You know, when Obama had inherited all that bullshit from Bush, everybody, you know, they, they kept wanting to say, oh, he need to get over that because he did this and he did that on his own. I'm like, okay, you know, that's cute, but hey, what's up? You know, at the same time, you know, now that Bush is doing, I mean, that this child is doing the same thing off of, off of Obama's stuff, nobody is saying, oh, get over it. Everybody's praising him. For doing something so this, that, and the third. So we have a double standard as always. Uh, but nonetheless, honey, the question becomes now what are we gonna do about it? Because we see all we see what's happening. We see what's going on. What are we going to do about it? How do we stop it from going anyplace else? How do we stop it from getting out of hand? Because it's only going to get worse if we, if we do not do anything about it now. He's you know at these damn rallies and shit. Y'all see they send they sending bombs. The children sending bombs to Clinton, Hillary, and to Obama, and to the CNN builders and all of that. What are we going to do about it? Because see now, you know they ain't got to, they ain't sticking the dogs out on nobody. They send the bombs. They sending the anthrax and shit. Okay. So if we know this is what's going on, what are we do? What are we going to do? How are we going to arm ourselves? How are we going to defuse it? Okay, what is it that we need to do? So those there are my questions for you this evening or this morning rather. I want you to take and share this with everybody. Let's get this tea. Pour out, pour out some tea, children, honey. Get your pots together and start serving up some tea. And let's do this thing. And Steve, you say what? I bet they're they're right. They, I bet they're right wing white supremacist terrorists. Well, you may be right, baby. You at, at this particular point, we can't put it past anybody because see, and, and then you know, uh, uh, 
look at it from this particular perspective, you know, we have never had outside influences. This whole Russia thing and dealing with the elections and carrying on, really? Really? And why Russia, when Russia was an enemy to the United States at one point? Now, we're supposed to be on good terms now, but now what are you trying to do? Are you trying to usher back in, you know, bad blood or whatever? You know, it, it's it's just a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. But, but... This is all about business and acquisitions, right? This is this is the business world. This is what business does when you're trying to sit there and play hard because you're trying to acquire something. And so y'all say Donald Trump is a businessman, honey. So how about that? Let me see what we got up in here. Okay, you, they asked if we'll be caught by the weekend. Okay, we'll see. They targeted all Democrats. Yeah, I saw that, Steve. That's that's where I was going. I was like, yeah, interesting. So, you know, because because this administration, he's been going around rallying and carrying on talking about don't vote Democrats because the Democrats are doing this and the Democrats are doing that. And so now, you know, with Hillary and Obama being the, the forefront of what Democrat means right now because he keeps throwing their names up everywhere. Hey, okay, what you got? Okay. Steve, you say, well, Putin hated Hillary and Obama. Interesting. Very interesting. See, don't do that. See, that's a, that's a conspiracy theory right there. But I hear where you're going with that. I, I hear exactly where you're going. So having said that, everybody, Trump, <laughs> Trump went bankrupt eight times. They got all their money from, from Russian oligarchs gangs. Yeah, not a conspiracy. <laughs> Okay, what you say is truth, honey. Well, okay. It's all going to come out in the wash, child. It's going to come out in the wash, and we all know it. We all know it. So on that note, sweetie, let me finish up because I'll be changing on in a minute. And um, I'm doing my thing here at the job. But uh, like I say, take this video and share it with others. Um, let's let's get this discussion popping. Let's dish the tea, honey. Dunk your crumpets, honey. You know, and carry on. Let's have a good time. Um... And uh, let's let's make let's make some noise, honey, and and find out how to rally the right way. Because maybe we don't need to do no more marching. Maybe we need to get some some activism together. We need some flyers, or we need we need to pull together to find out how we can overcome this. Okay, and Steve, you say, well, seriously, it's all been covered. Hillary called Putin out, and Obama put sanctions on Russia. Yeah, that's true. That there is true. And and so now this administration is trying to go up in there and remove all the sanctions. He said that. Vote, vote, vote against the Republican mm -hmm. crime party. <laughs> the Republican syndicate. How about that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, on that note, everybody, let me get you guys out of here because I got to finish up my paperwork and things and all of that. And um, we're going from there. So, honey, if you love me, tell a friend. Honey, if you hate me, tell an enemy. But do know this, one way style, one way, shape, style, form, or fashion, everything that I'm doing will move forward. And as I've said, honey, always go to my website, uh, www.dishingtea.com, and uh, you can find out everything that I'm doing there. We're, we're redoing the website right now, um, and Karen also can look, have a little better presentation in Karen on, so we're upgrading and all of those kinds of things. So... Having said all that, honey, until the next time, my darlings, ah, I love it.